Oh, this is huge, guys! In an incredible turn of events, a review published on a peer-reviewed journal titled Protein Restriction for CKD, Time to Move On, is shaking the world of kidney disease! Yes, you heard it right! We can finally stop shoving plant-based diets down to the throats of people with kidney disease! So great news, guys! Meat! is back on the menu because this time this is not coming from some steak obsessed carnivore influencer you can eat as much animal protein as you want and you're never gonna harm your kidney function but from a genuine review of studies when i read the title of this paper i nearly threw a party Balloons, confetti, the whole shebang. I mean, finally, no more restrictions for CKD patients. Every patient will now be able to enjoy those tasty fast food burgers once again, I thought. Because, and I'm quoting the review here, good food and dietary variety are some of the great joys of life. And they go on by saying that, all a low-protein diet does is, to shrink the patient down to the size of his kidneys. Yes, this is coming from a real medical journal, not from a gossip magazine. And while some might argue that researchers in the 60s were probably saying similar things about cigarette smoking, this review is not just smoke and mirrors, I swear. So, what on earth made these researchers change their minds on the renal diet? Well, it's all because we have ACE inhibitors and FARC-SIGA now. Swapping salads for prescriptions. Now, that's health innovation. And ho! Oh, they casually mentioned that one of the authors happened to work for Javira, AstraZeneca, and Bayer. But hey, at least they're not on McDonald's payroll, right? On a more serious note, every time I post a video debating controversial medical topics, it gets flagged by YouTube's team of censors for demonetization. So if you're from YouTube HQ and you're itching to demonetize me, keep this in mind. The real authority on the treatment for kidney disease isn't the authors of this review. It's the KDOQI, alright? They're the rule makers and their rules say that chronic kidney disease patients are still supposed to follow a low protein diet. They are very clear that the review I'm debating today goes against their judgment. So yeah. I'm the old man yelling at a cloud here. And these researchers are the young punks. Go censor them, not me. Okay, back on topic. Let's talk about this new review titled Prodding Restriction for CKD, Time to Move On. Or as I like to call it, the More Drugs, Less Fruits review. So is this review justified in telling us that plant-based diets were just one big colossal mistake and that as long as we pump CKD patients full of medications, they'll be perfectly fine and can chow down on whatever they please. Well, let's start digging into this magical world of contradictions and find out. And by the way, I'm Catherine, your friendly doctor in natural medicine and a kidney health researcher. I'm also famous for writing the longest intro on a YouTube video ever. So if you're still with me, today's video is about a new review of studies that could so please change our lives for good. The authors are convinced that since we have shiny new medications for CKD, we can toss those boring renal diets out the window. Ah, no, they insist this is not just a clever ploy to rake in more duff for the drug companies we all work for. It's for the patients. Yeah, 
because those pesky patients didn't want to follow the diet in the first place. So why even bother, right? After thoroughly reviewing this recent paper, I wasn't sure if I should have made this video at all. And you'll understand exactly why by the end of this video. But guess what? I publish it anyway. And do you know why? Because some of your doctors are going to use this recent review to discourage you from following a diet. You don't believe me? Here's a gem for you. Someone asked on Reddit if protein can damage the kidneys and a self-proclaimed doctor answered. MD here, low protein diet for folks with chronic kidney disease was recommended in the past before newer medications were approved. And by the way, I've encountered some doctors in the wild saying the same thing. Yeah, avoiding protein is so last season, they say. Get with the times, people. Take this pill. And I have no doubts this kind of reasoning will be echoed by some of your PCPs as well. But have these doctors actually read the whole review or just the title? Guys, of course, there is a reason why these researchers believe that dietary restrictions should be a thing of the past. And no, it's not because for your average family doctor, the science of nutrition is just as confusing as Will Smith's marriage. No! I'm going to, okay? No, there is more. So let's see why low protein diets are obsolete now. In order to prove that the low protein diet doesn't work, first of all, the authors of the review started by reviewing the current medical literature. And I would say that was a risky move for them. I mean, spoiler alert, but reviewing medical literature was as bumbling for that AstraZeneca and Bayer guy as a USB cable only fitting at the third attempt. I mean, in the first study, they reviewed, in order to support their more drug-less fruits theory, patients not following a low-protein diet had a significant decline in kidney function compared to those following the renal diet and about double the chances of ending up in dialysis. But ho, oh, they dismissed this study because some patients didn't like their new diet. And yeah, that may sound funny, but only until your doctor convinces you to stop your diet for a cocktail of medications. Second study, once again, patients following a low protein diet had a little bit more than half the chance of doubling their creatinine or ending up in dialysis. Third study, half the chance of dialysis in the low protein group and slower GFR decline. But I mean, who cares about science when we can just pop more pills. And guys, these are the studies these no diet researchers are using to support their theory. All right. Another gem from the review highlighted that CKD patients with diabetic nephropathy not following a low protein diet had nearly three times the chance of dialysis or death over four years compared to those following the diet. But of course, the researchers decided to ignore that fact because, I mean, what's even the point of living if you can't eat McDonald's burgers and assorted junk foods all day? And there is more, but I think you get the point. But it's worth mentioning that they also decided to exclude some studies that didn't fit their narrative. For example, this one review that found even a link between high protein diet and lower kidney function in the general population. But they decided not to mention that in their review because, I mean, science is hard, isn't it? How do you even start trying to debunk a hundred years of medical literature without enough cherry picking to run a jam factory? These are just some of the relevant studies they decided to ignore, by the way. But hey, what do I know? I'm not the one making big bucks working for Davida and AstraZeneca. Now, the funny part is that even these researchers were basically forced to admit that Red meat is very bad for you. Yes, this you read here is from the More Drugs, Less Fruits review. 
So no McDonald's for Sigiri patients after all? They should have said that in the title, feels like clickbait now. I mean, are these researchers already admitting that doctors shouldn't really be stopping from referring their Sigiri patients to a dietitian? Now, their argument here is, of course, that not all the patients in the low-protein diet groups have avoided dialysis. In fact, since most of the patients following a low-protein diet only cut in half their chance of ending up in dialysis, these researchers are now looking for an explanation for the conflicting signals they got. Which is like saying that this diet is giving them mixed signals and it's all very confusing for them, but they still really want you to give up your plant-based diet and replace it with more pills because no diet should be prescribed unless it works perfectly and all the times they say just like a usb cable now guys to sum it up these researchers have basically three arguments against the low protein diet first of all this diet is not perfect some patients despite their attempt to follow a low protein diet still ended up in dialysis and of course they are right about that if the diet was enough for everyone to avoid dialysis we wouldn't need nephrologists anymore all right and none of you will be dealing with complications of kidney disease that need diagnosis with unexpected symptoms, comorbidities, and other issues. So they are right about that. Their second argument against the renal diet is that this diet is hard to follow and adherence is low. And this, of course, is true as well. In my experience, most patients end up eating too much protein way more than prescribed. What I would say at this point is, imagine what kind of results we could get if all patients followed the guidelines and they all restricted their protein intake effectively enough. But their answer to this issue was completely different. If the patient don't like the diet, why even bother? But hey, I guess giving the patients a diet, teaching them how to follow it and monitoring them is too much work for them and not paid well enough, I would add better to just push more pills but unfortunately for them it's not like the kdoqi the authority on this matter is going to be retracting their guideline anytime soon the lpd is still going to be the mainstay treatment for kidney disease in the future in fact with more patients following a low protein diet there will be more chances of studying the effects of this diet and cherry picking will be way more difficult Okay, but let's talk about the best argument these researchers are using to support their theory that low protein diets are a thing of the past, which is the new treatments we have access to now that were not in use during most of the trials done on low protein diets. The data supporting a LPD were largely collected before widespread adoption of renin angiotensin system blockade and entirely before the addition of sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors. So, what are these miracle drugs and when we can start taking them alongside our Mac menu with large fries, you may ask? Well, the first one is for Xiga from AstraZeneca, which is one of the few sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors available today. And don't get me wrong, Forexiga is a wonderful medicine. It can actually slow down the progression of kidney disease and that's great. It comes with just a couple of drawbacks though. First of all, the price around $10,000 a year for the patient. And of course, you could reduce the price if your insurance covers it. But there is another issue. Because you see, when you start Forex Seagull, your kidney function is going to take a rapid turn for the worse before stabilizing to a more stable decline. And this is an issue because it means that most patients in stage 4 or worse can't be started on it but wait there is more if you have diabetes and kidney disease you basically can't take forex sig at all only those diagnosed with ckd with a gfr above 45 can take it and that includes very few patients unfortunately and what about that renin angiotensin system blockade they mentioned you may ask ah uh, yeah arbs and ace inhibitors well they help a little bit, I guess, but they are also the main cause for too high potassium levels in CKD patients. So 
If you take them, your doctor will tell you to give up potatoes, bananas, and avocados, which means that you can have your hamburger as long as it's not made from red meat. Ah, uh, it should come with no added sodium as well. And of course, no fries because they have potassium and no colas either because those are full of phosphorus. But Catherine, the study says that good food and dietary variety are some of the great joys of life. How can they write that when after reading the study, it's clear that CKD patients won't be even able to enjoy a lousy McDonald's hamburger? No, guys, you don't get it. You thought that good food was coming for you? Food is the greatest joy of life, but not for you. For the authors of the study. I mean, can you imagine what kind of food are they going to eat with all the money they will make from AstraZeneca and Davida when half of you is started on $10,000 a year medications and the other half is started on dialysis.